This week's episode is supported by the new prehistoric horror film Out of Darkness, only in theaters February 9th. 45,000 years ago, in an inhospitable landscape, six people have struggled across the sea in hopes of finding a new home. When night falls, hope turns to terror as they realize they are not alone. As relationships in the group begin to fracture, a determined young woman confronts the terrible actions needed to survive this horrifying and mysterious new enemy. A unique horror film set in the Stone Age, Out of Darkness digs into the violent and monstrous roots of our past, according to Dread Central. Sight and Sound calls it a brutal, horrifying entry in the canon of prehistory on screen. See it only in theaters starting February 9th. When you travel for business, do you like to nab a window seat or opt for the aisle to ensure a faster getaway? Do you stay at an uptown hotspot with a modernist chef or a homey hotel that's famous for grandma's cooking? However you choose to hit the road, you can earn five times points on flights and prepaid hotels booked on AmexTravel.com with an American Express Business Platinum card. Terms apply. Learn more at AmericanExpress.com slash business dash platinum. Amex Business Platinum. Built for business by American Express. Knock, knock, real estate pros. You could save up to 30% when you file your taxes with Block Advisors instead of a typical accountant. Block Advisors by h and Block provides affordable tax expertise that finds every credit and deduction you deserve. 100% accuracy guaranteed. Visit blockadvisors.com slash real estate today to get started. Average savings based on national average fees for federal form 1040. Plus schedule C and one state filing in the latest available 2020 survey conducted by the National Society of Accountants. Pricing may vary. See blockadvisors.com slash guarantees for full details. Today, we're going to take a little journey through Tennessee. Now, I've only been to Tennessee once or maybe twice when I was a kid. Having a grandmother who lived in Kentucky, it, was, it wasn't really that long of a drive to get to Tennessee from her house. At least, that's what I remember. And when we went, we visited Graceland. My mother is a diehard Elvis fan, so that was her. It was her Vatican. I don't know where I'm going with this. That's just that's what the old brain wanted to say. So I had to say it. Anyway, today we're going to dive into the eerie tales of Skin Tom, a phantom figure whose presence still terrifies its witnesses. We're going to uncover the origins of the White Bluff Screamer, a spectral entity who screams and paralyzes all who hears it. And then we're going to tread cautiously towards Werewolf Springs, where whispers of shape-shifting creatures echo through the dense foliage. Together, we're going to navigate the shadows of Tennessee's folklore, unveiling age-old secrets lingering in hushed whispers for generations, just waiting to be revealed. To brave new venturers. Do you believe in ghosts? Join me on the journey through America's dark and haunted past as we explore the folklore and ghost stories that have been passed down for generations. What scares you? Let's find out. I'm Christopher Feinstein, and this is Haunted American History. Have you seen the ghost of old Skin Tom? Bloody red bones with the skin all gone? Wouldn't it be chilly with no skin on? Throughout the world, a plethora of urban legends about the boogeyman circulate, much to the delight of horror enthusiasts. These tales often involve real-life stories or experiences that send shivers down one's spine, whether it's due to the gruesome events associated with them or the sheer horrifying nature of the boogeyman's characteristics. Among these legends, the Tennessee tale of Skinned Tom checks both boxes. For aficionados of horror studying urban legends, the story of Skin Tom serves as a wellspring of satisfaction. This haunting legend revolves around a ladies' man who made the fatal mistake of choosing the wrong woman to shower his affections upon. It is a tale not meant for the faint-hearted, and one that dives into the depths of darkness and despair. So come on, 
let's now embark on a journey to explore this legend and discover its eerie origins. The chilling tale of Skin Tom takes root in the idyllic southern neighborhood of Walland, nestled within the heartland of Tennessee. Now, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. Listen, it's spelled W-A-L-L-A-N-D, Walland. That's, 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 what, that's what I'm going to do. You know how many times I get yelled at for mispronouncing either a neighborhood's name or a, a river or a, a, a lake? Listen, when you come to New York and you're like, oh, do they know where Houston Street is? Do I say, it's Houston Street, idiot? No. So lay off me, all right? I mispronounce things. I, I admit it. This is who I am. Sorry. I had a couple of uh, comments on Spotify that really got to me lately. Anyway, it is here that our antagonist, Tom, or Chris in this sense, this is where our antagonist, Chris, lives. I'm leaving it in. It is here that our antagonist, Tom, blossomed into a young man, epitomizing all the qualities of a classic playboy. With his striking good looks, quick wit, and irresistible charm, and an innate understanding of a woman's desires, he effortlessly captivated the women around him. Tom was a typical womanizer, adept at seducing and dating local ladies only to discard them and seek out new conquests without remorse. Son of a bitch. In this small Tennessee town, no girl remained immune to Tom's charms, and most eventually found themselves ensnared in his web of seduction. As he achieved greater success with the fairer sex, his insatiable appetite for companionship grew. Gradually, he expanded his horizons beyond Walland, venturing into nearby towns in search of greener pastures. It was during one such expedition that Tom encountered Eleanor, a woman who would forever alter the course of his life. Eleanor possessed a beauty that could rival the stars with her enchanting smile, piercing blue eyes, and cascading locks of golden hair. Instantly smitten by Tom's allure, she succumbed to his advances, and they embarked on a passionate affair. Whether Eleanor concealed her marital status from Tom or he willingly engaged in the forbidden thrill of romancing a married woman remains a mystery. However, their romps were far from discreet, and the whispers of gossip eventually reached the ears of Eleanor's husband, a man of unsavory character, both physically imposing and skilled with a hunting knife. Devoured by an uncontrollable mix of jealousy and rage, Eleanor's husband meticulously plotted his revenge. He informed her that he needed to leave town for the weekend for work, but instead, he concealed himself in the lush foliage surrounding their home. Hidden from view, he watched as Tom arrived in his car, witnessed Eleanor's passionate embrace, and quietly trailed behind them. The ill-fated journey led them to the local lover's lane, a secluded spot where couples sought privacy and the embrace of the night. Seizing the moment, the husband pounced upon them within the confines of the car, his hunting knife plunged deep into Eleanor's stomach. Yet, this was only the beginning of his malevolent intentions. Dragging Tom away from the vehicle and deeper into the nearby woods, the husband ignored his desperate pleas. In that hidden realm, Tom's anguished screams pierced into the night air, resonating through the trees for miles on end, but falling on deaf ears. Eventually, Consumed by guilt or perhaps driven by an overwhelming need for absolution, Eleanor's husband turned himself into the local sheriff. When law enforcement arrived at the scene of their encounter, they were met with a sight that chilled their bones to the core. Eleanor, though gravely wounded, clung to life. But as they ventured further into the woods, their eyes fell upon a grotesque tableau of horror a complete suit of human skin hanging from a tree. It was evident that Eleanor's husband had employed his hunting knife with surgical precision, flaying and skinning Tom alive. 
He had then draped the skin suit over a nearby branch before departing, leaving Tom to suffer a slow and agonizing death. However, to their bewilderment, Tom's skinned corpse was nowhere to be found in the vicinity. And with that, the legend of Skin Tom was born. Now, according to local lore, Tom defied death itself and emerged from his brutal demise as an undead specter, forever cursed with a ghastly appearance due to his complete lack of skin. He now lurks in the shadows of Lover's Lane, haunting the very place where his life met its gruesome end. Armed with a massive hunting knife, an eerie replica of the one that was used to inflict his torment, Skin Tom seeks out unfaithful couples, bringing to them the unfathomable torture he himself endured on that fateful night. Through his vengeful actions, he imparts a chilling lesson about the dire consequences of infidelity. Even today, parents caution their teenage children to steer clear of Lover's Lane, lest they encounter the presence of Skin Tom. Though primarily a cautionary tale wielded by parents to maintain control over their wayward offspring, and like most folklore and urban legends, the legend of Skin Tom carries profound life lessons about the perils of infidelity and the harrowing aftermath of one's actions. Above all else, it is the horrifying and grisly nature of Tom's fate that enthralls horror enthusiasts, igniting their imaginations as they visualize the sight of a fully skinned zombie-like figure stalking through the night. The eerie legend of skinned Tom has survived the passage of time, echoing through the countryside of Tennessee and serving as a haunting warning of what happens to those who break the bonds of loyalty. In the near isolated area known as Trace Creek, nestled not far from where modern day Highway 47 crosses southwest of Montgomery Bell State Park, a young family sought to make their new life in 1920s rural Tennessee. Now their names have long been forgotten, but their story remains etched in the history of the region. With seven children in tow, ranging from the oldest at around 14 to the youngest at six. They were just one of many young families who had spread to the rural areas of Tennessee after the end of World War I, striving to rebuild their lives from the ground up. They constructed a modest cabin-style home in the bottomlands southeast of White Bluff and diligently planted their crops, content in the rhythm of their rural existence. Yet, as the sun dipped below the horizon and darkness enshrouded their homestead, an unsettling disturbance shattered the tranquility of the nights. A screeching wail, haunting and otherworldly, pierced the stillness and reverberated through their valley. The children huddled close to their mother, their eyes wide with fear, while their father, armed only with a lantern, ventured outside to investigate. Listen, that's a lot braver than uh, what I would do. I got woken up a few few nights ago to a fox. Anyone have foxes around their house? I, I mean, I guess I do. But it sounded like a woman was screaming bloody murder outside of my house. And was I, I didn't even peek out the window just to see. I said, oh, that's none of my business. Just in case there was some sort of ghoul wandering the streets. And it made eye contact with me, and then it's going to run into my house and get me. No, thanks. That's all right. Right back to bed. Jesus, I probably shouldn't be saying this out loud. Anyway, that brave, brave man combed the perimeter of their dwelling. His senses sharpened and his heart pounding. Yet no trace of the source of this unnerving noise could be found. That's even worse. That, that's the worst thing that could possibly happen. Like, you don't find anything. I'd rather, like, open the window and peek out and see some creature out there. Because at least, all right, I know I'm not crazy. But if there's nothing there, either you're, you've lost your mind, Chris, or it's it's invisible. Oh, boy. Or it's already gotten in the house. As soon as you looked out the window, it's already in the house. It's behind you, standing there waiting. No, thanks. I'm good. I'm okay. Thank you. Dismissing it as nothing more than the cry of an injured animal, he returned to his family and urged them to sleep. Jesus. But 
as it turns out, sleep eluded them in the following nights. Yeah, no kidding. The screams grew in intensity and frequency, and each night more relentless than the last. Thank God I only heard it that one night, otherwise I would have moved. The once peaceful haven of their home now became a place of terror, where slumber and a peaceful night's sleep was a distant dream. The children cowered beneath their blankets, dreading the onset of darkness and the torment it brought. As twilight descended upon their world, the haunting screams would resume with a vengeance. Desperation consumed their father, his love for his family fueling his resolve to vanquish this malevolent force that plagued their lives. Determined to bring an end to their suffering, he made a solemn decision. One evening, as the sun cast its final rays of warmth over the surrounding hills, he instructed his wife to secure the doors and windows and to only open them upon his return. Clutching a rifle tightly in his hands, he positioned himself on the porch, ready to confront the unknown. The familiar wailing commenced almost instantly as darkness blanketed the land, and with a heavy heart, he bid farewell to his family, his determination unyielding, and he ventured into the foreboding depths of the woods. Tonight, he would uncover the source of their torment and ensure its demise. Bound by a mix of resolve and trepidation, he plunged through the dense brush, his senses keenly attuned to every rustle and whisper of the night. The ceaseless scream pierced his ears, sending icy chills coursing through his veins with each bone-chilling note. Though he was an expert woodsman, he struggled to maintain his bearings amidst the fog that enveloped him, his path obscured by this ethereal mist. The wailing seemed to taunt him, teasingly shifting its distance and direction whenever he thought he was close to its origin. Perplexed, he wondered if he was trapped in this otherworldly game, trapped in this dance with an unseen adversary. Was there more than one beast lurking in these woods, tormenting him and his family with their unholy cries? The sound ricocheted off towering trees, disorienting him further and thwarting his attempts to track this elusive source. In a moment of desperation, he extinguished his light and knelt down amidst the underbrush, straining to pinpoint the direction from which the screams emanated. If I cannot find it, then I shall let it find me, he muttered gritted teeth. Determination etched upon his face, he crouched low and waited, the oppressive darkness pressing in around him. Suddenly, the bone-curdling screams of a woman and children intermingled with the haunting wail, shattering the stillness of the night. A surge of adrenaline coursed through his veins as he bound through the foggy abyss, each footfall echoing with a mix of desperation and terror. He called out for his family, his voice laced with desperation but only their terrified screams responded to his pleas. Time seemed to stretch into eternity as he strained against the impenetrable void, his feet pounding tirelessly against the forest floor. And then, through the misty veil, he caught sight of the dim lantern hanging on his front porch. Salvation was within reach. He pushed himself to the limits of his strength, his heart pounding in sync with each labored breath. And finally... He burst through the cabin door. What awaited him inside was a sense of unimaginable horror. The once vibrant sanctuary had been transformed into a tableau of carnage. The lifeless bodies of his beloved wife and children lay strewn about the cabin, their forms torn asunder. Overwhelmed by an onslaught of horror and disbelief, he collapsed to his knees his anguished cries mingling with the eerie wailing that still persisted outside. Now this story does not end here, for there are variations that continue beyond this point. Some say that, consumed by grief and fury, the man embarked on a vengeful quest to hunt down their assailant, encountering a ghostly female shrouded in white mist. Others claim he crossed paths with a beast of immense proportions, its fur as white as snow, possessing savage claws and teeth. 
These divergent accounts have fueled speculation among paranormal enthusiasts who believe that the White Bluff Screamer may either be a banshee or a cryptid. Although no official records of such a gruesome murder can be found, the locals of White Bluff, Tennessee, steeped in the town's rich history, maintain that this dark incident did occur. Rumors persist that the remains of the man's cabin still stand, serving as a haunting reminder of the White Bluff Screamer's lingering presence. Now, what could this Screamer truly be? If we turn to the pages of Encyclopedia Britannica, we find mention of the Banshee, a female supernatural being who is deeply rooted in Celtic folklore. According to legend, her piercing wails foretell the impending death of a family member to those unfortunate enough to hear them. While typically associated with Irish folklore, variations of the Banshee exist in Welsh and Scottish traditions. And the United States as well harbors numerous tales about Banshees, but those are usually based in North Carolina or South Dakota. It's weird how these folklores and stories that get passed over from Europe kind of settle regionally, I guess it settles with the settlers. Anyway, well, I guess that's why this show exists. Those who believe the Screamer to be a cryptid propose another intriguing possibility. In Great Smoky Mountains National Park, located in eastern Tennessee, several reported sightings of a creature reminiscent of Bigfoot have been documented. Now, while this area lies at some distance from White Bluff, it's important to note that Tennessee boasts vast expanses of densely forested land. It is entirely plausible that multiple creatures roam these wildernesses, and they migrate across different regions of the state. What I find interesting, and also a little disturbing, is that many reported encounters with cryptids or monsters in Tennessee bear the same sinister undertone. They mirror the grisly fate that befell that ill-fated family in White Bluff, Tennessee. Hey folks, I just wanted to stop here and say hello and give you guys a little update. I know last week I talked about the Zachary Main book and the Kickstarter that is coming and um, that might be live now. At the date of this recording, it's not, but I'm working on it and working on it the tiers and stuff for Kickstarter. I don't know how Kickstarter works, so it's a bit of a learning curve for me. But, uh, yeah, so that's going to be up, the Kickstarter for the Zachary Bain novel. Um, yeah, it's it's going really well. Um, like I said, I've been working on this book for a while, put pen to paper, but I haven't really picked it up to look at it since, uh, God knows, I've been doing that the past week and a half, two weeks, and going through each chapter, and I feel like the first three chapters are, like, done, like, ready to go to, like, an editor and keep going. So, yeah, I'm making good headway, sitting down and actually picking it apart and, you know, looking at things through a different set of eyes than when I first started putting the story together. It's really, really interesting. But yeah, there's uh, that Kickstarter is going to be up, and there's going to be a whole mess of tears. I know I spoke last last week. I was like, I, and I made some crazy number. I was like, oh, hundred dollars, but that's that's ridiculous. There's going to be all different pricey tiers, and all things will be the 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 perks, I guess, or the rewards for the tiers. Again, I don't know how. I, I'm still learning how Kickstarter works. Will reflect the. The price of the tier but regardless of any kind of uh any kind of donation to the kickstarter or involvement in the kickstarter gets everybody who gets involved at the very minimum a digital copy of the book so once upon obviously upon completion but i'm going to like people who donate they're going to get like chapter by chapter updates like prior to going to editing after they come out of editing the artists that I'm going to work with and uh, the distributors and there's a whole bunch of costs that come with that and you know, honestly the, the cost of my time still having a full-time job and the 
podcast and X, Y, and Z. There's only a certain middle, little bit of time, and the donations from the Kickstarter would greatly help and expedite that. So that's what's coming with that. And yeah, keep those uh, Spotify and Apple and wherever else you comment on the socials, keep those coming. Even the ones of people who criticize the way I pronounce things and locations, yes, you can even keep those coming, even though they do. It's the starting, the starting to get to me, guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, keep your eyes open for um, YouTube. YouTube, there's stuff coming. TikTok, too. I'm on TikTok doing little short, little uh, spooky videos about folklore, some things I've talked about, some things I haven't yet on the podcast, and vice versa. On YouTube, the links to all of those are in the show notes if you're interested. And come by, hang out, say hello. All right, folks. Thanks so much. And uh, let's keep Tennessee rolling. Later. Hey, folks. I've got something I want to ask you all. What's the best way to learn a new language? If you've been listening to my show, you know I need the help. Well, I actually got an answer. And the answer is immersion living where the language is spoken and using it every day, but that's not in the cards this year. Well, I've discovered the next best thing. Babbel. As you all know, I struggle with pronunciations anytime a language that isn't English pops up. And even when it does. Hey, listen, I'm honest. And it's not just during my show. I used to fumble through menus and awkwardly consult language apps while out on vacation. But since discovering Babbel, it's been a game changer. And I think you will all notice a difference. Their convenient courses have helped me learn real-life conversation skills in a different language. Now ordering food, asking for directions, and chatting with merchants is a breeze. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. No need to break the bank on private tutors or waste hours on ineffective language apps. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are crafted by over 150 experts to get you speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. It's so wild, I can already see a difference. We can all use an excuse to be more worldly. So why not join the millions of Babbel language learners that span across all age groups? And here's the kicker. Babbel's advanced speech recognition is like having your own personal language coach. It hones in on your pronunciation, which I needed desperately, getting you prepped for confident, real-world conversations. Now, the folks at Babbel have cooked up something special for my listeners. Go to babbel.com slash haunted. Right now, you can get 50% off a one-time payment for a lifetime Babbel subscription. That's babbel.com slash haunted. B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash haunted. Rules and restrictions may apply. Knock, knock, real estate pros. You could save up to 30% when you file your taxes with Block Advisors instead of a typical accountant. Block Advisors by h &R Block provides affordable tax expertise that finds every credit and deduction you deserve. 100% accuracy guaranteed. Visit blockadvisors.com slash real estate today to get started. Average savings based on national average fees for federal form 1040, plus schedule C and one state filing in the latest available 2020 survey conducted by the National Society of Accountants. Pricing may vary. See blockadvisors.com slash guarantees for full details. There exists another fable that has endured through generations in Dixon County, the legend of Werewolf Springs. According to this tale that originated in the 1860s, a passing circus train either halted unexpectedly or derailed just outside of Burn Station, Tennessee. In the chaos that ensued, numerous animals from the circus managed to escape into the surrounding countryside. Among them were two fellows known as the Wolfmen of Borneo, a sideshow act that said that the men had ability to transform into half-man, half-beast creatures at will. Unable to recapture these elusive figures, the circus abandoned them to their fate in the untamed hills of Tennessee. Two years after this train incident, a local landowner and his foreman traversed an area that is now unofficially known as Werewolf Springs near Burn Station, while en route to a homestead in nearby Beckley. Now let's paint a picture. As twilight cast its eerie glow upon the landscape and the road became treacherously muddy, a sense of foreboding enveloped the foreman. 
he felt as though an unseen presence stalked them from the shadows. Anxious, he voiced his fears to his boss, only to be met with dismissal. Determined to press on through the night, they urged their mules forward, their progress slowed by the treacherous terrain. Suddenly, a wild howl pierced the twilight, shattering their nerves as the creature emerged from the gloom, moving swiftly on all fours. Panic seized them, and abandoning their horses and wagon, they fled into the encompassing woods, each choosing their own path in a desperate bid for survival. The landowner crashed through the underbrush with every ounce of strength he could muster until he heard another chilling howl, mingled with the terrified screams of his foreman echoing from behind him. Fear propelled him onward, his heart pounding in his chest as he raced against an implacable foe. The creature never pursued him, granting him another chance at life and allowing him to recount this harrowing tale. Once safely returned to Burns, he wasted no time in seeking aid from the sheriff. Together, they assembled a determined posse to find the missing foreman and hunt down the creature that had wrought such havoc. Armed with a goat as bait, they ventured into the nearby springs where reports of strange animal sightings had accumulated. Yeah, it's like they're, they're trying to lure out the T-Rex from Jurassic Park. T-Rex don't want to be fed. T-Rex wants to hunt. They tethered a goat to a sturdy tree splitting into pairs and encircling the clearing with rifles at the ready. The moon hung high in the sky, casting an ethereal glow upon their surroundings. An air of nervous anticipation permeated the group as they scanned the perimeter, their gazes darting among the shadows. Midnight drew near, and just as the sheriff contemplated calling off the hunt, a bone-chilling scream shattered the silence. A massive, hairy creature materialized before their eyes, hurling toward the tethered goat with alarming speed. The posse unleashed a barrage of gunfire, their voices joining in a chorus of defiance. But when they illuminated the clearing with their lanterns to assess their success, they only found emptiness. The creature had vanished into thin air, leaving behind no trace except for the absence of two members of the posse who were never seen again, and minus one goat. Determined to rid their community of this elusive beast, the sheriff enlisted the aid of a renowned big game hunter. Together, they journeyed to a remote cabin near the springs, where they would commence their final assault on this creature. For two nights, they stalked their prey, their senses sharpened and their resolve unyielding. Yet, despite their vigilance, no sign of the beast presented itself. Fatigue weighed heavily upon them as they retired to the cabin to rest before embarking on the third and fateful night of hunting. And just before they dozed off to sleep, a resounding wail shattered the tranquility of their surroundings. Peering through a window, the hunter caught sight of the creature lurking at the edge of the woods. Determined not to let it escape, he fired upon it from the safety of the cabin. But whether his shots missed their mark or merely enraged the beast, the creature charged toward the cabin with fury that was unmatched. The door hinges groaned and strained against the onslaught, threatening to give way under the relentless assault. The hunter fired round after round through the door, uncertain if his bullets found their mark. Desperation guided his actions as he barricaded the door and window with heavy furniture, desperately awaiting the creature's next move. At one point, a weak section of the back wall seemed to bow under the creature's immense strength, but a well-placed shot from his pistol dissuaded it from breaching its way inside. Hours stretched into an eternity as the creature relentlessly tested every vulnerable point of the cabin, until finally, seemingly defeated, it retreated into the night. The hunter his instincts honed by years of dangerous pursuits remain vigilant. Low on ammunition, he climbed into the rafters, seeking higher ground and reloading every weapon within reach. And then, in a moment fraught with tension, the beast returned with renewed ferocity, crashing against the door until it yielded to its relentless assault. The hunter unleashed a barrage of bullets, 
striking the creature multiple times. Clawing and scratching, it sought to reach him, but he had climbed beyond its reach. As dawn broke over the horizon, its warm light heralding the new day, the creature fled from the cabin and disappeared into the depths of the woods. Farther north and east of Werewolf Springs lies Creech Hollow, where a cave once stood, a cave that is believed to be the lair of this beast. In this same region, whispers of a young girl who vanished while fetching water from a spring permeate the local folklore. A search party ventured forth in a desperate quest to find her stumbling upon a trove of both animal and human bones within its cavernous depths. Alas, the girl remained elusive her fate forever entwined with the mysteries of that lost cave, which is now submerged beneath the waters of Creech Hollow Lake, a reservoir created when the park came into existence. Mule and horse bones have also been discovered in the vicinity of Werewolf Springs, further fueling the chilling legends that haunt this land. A state park ranger, well-versed in these tales of yore, stumbled upon the remnants of a cabin situated between Werewolf Springs and the nearby Hall Family Cemetery, which are now integral parts of Montgomery Bell State Park. Though he couldn't definitively link it to the hunter's cabin, its presence evoked memories of that fateful encounter. Yet, skeptics abound, dismissing these stories as mere figments of imagination or elaborate fabrications. Now, despite the lack of evidence suggesting that the White Bluff Screamer and the Beast of Werewolf Springs are nothing but myths, longtime residents of Dixon County, particularly those living in proximity to Burns and White Bluff, remain steadfast in their claims of having witnessed or heard the Screamer. To them, it is not inconceivable that this elusive entity and the fearsome beast could be one and the same traversing the dense woodlands surrounding the park. Unfortunately, during my research, I wasn't able to find any available records to confirm any rail incidences involving a circus train near White Bluff. White rail lines have crisscrossed the area since the mid-1800s, and historical accounts primarily focus on the transportation of troops and munitions during the Civil War, rather than civilian circus escapades. Furthermore, claims that a wagon stalked by the beast belonging to an iron mining magnate Montgomery Bell are mired in contradiction, as Bell's demise occurred in 1855, predating the first encounter. There are plenty of families that still reside in the region, and a lot of their recollections growing up around Werewolf Springs devoid any mention of a creature that tormented their family. Nevertheless, reports of a strange occurrence in the woodland surrounding the White Bluff persist. One such account tells a tale of a hunter at a cabin near the park who encountered a cryptid-like creature after cleaning and preparing a deer. He placed the innards in a wash tub for disposal and hung the deer for skinning. As he paused on the porch to catch his breath, an eerie silence descended upon the woods. Suddenly, his hunting dogs began baying frantically, racing to the cabin with tails tucked between their legs driven by sheer terror. Venturing off the porch to investigate, he beheld a monstrous white-haired creature rounding the corner. It first set its sights on his defenseless dogs before turning its attention towards him. In a desperate bid for safety, he bolted for the cabin, locking himself inside and barricading the door as his loyal companions continued barking and howling at the presence just beyond their reach. The creature wailed and paced upon the porch for what seemed like an eternity before finally relenting, seizing his hard-earned deer and absconding into the woods nearby. Days later, he stumbled upon the abandoned tub completely licked clean, a chilling reminder of a close encounter with something that was far beyond his comprehension. Did this hunter indeed cross paths with the fabled White Bluff Screamer? Or did he unwittingly encounter the beast that has forever enshrouded Werewolf Springs in infamy? The truth remains elusive, shrouded in the depths of the Tennessee woodlands, where whispers of wailing still echo in the trees. In White Bluff, Tennessee, there is something lurking and something wailing in the darkness. 
something that defies explanation and leaves all who dare to venture into its domain with many more questions than answers. I'm Christopher Feinstein, and this is Haunted American History. I'd like to welcome the newest members of the Patreon, Jerry and Axel. Thank you guys so much for joining. Your support means the world to me. I say it time and time again, every time we get a new member, but my Patreon members are the most important people because you guys give me that little boost that I need when I'm not feeling like just literally doing anything. I have many days where that happens, where it's like, oh, God, I just have to move today. And I just don't want it. But then I'm like, oh, there's people there who believe in me enough that they want to be members of the Patreon and, you know, support me that way. And I can't let, can't let you down. So I'll try my hardest not to. So thank you again so, so much. And welcome. If you'd like to join the Patreon, patreon.com slash Haunted American History. We have uh, ad-free episodes, early releases, and uh, yeah, just my eternal, eternal gratitude. Thank you all so much again. Later, folks. Stephen King, good news. There's a club for you. The Losers Club. Every Friday, us losers journey through the never-ending wastelands of King's Dominion. We sink our teeth into each of King's novels, dive deep into the lore, and review every adaptation. Even better, we're always having guests over. Thomas Jane, Will Wheaton, Mary Lambert, Mick Garris, the list goes on. So what are you waiting for? Join us as we read on through long days and pleasant nights.